Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a striped tail. So these are the supplies that you're going to be needing as well as the fur of your choice. So some good fabric scissors, some pencils. I have two kinds. I included this um, white charcoal pencil. It's not zooming. There we go. This white charcoal pencil because it's really good with um, working with black fur so you can make the lines easier. And then just a regular pencil. Um, this one will be for drawing on the fur as well as creating your pattern. And then a measuring tape because you want the stripes to be um, evenly spaced out. So I want to first talk a little bit about creating the pattern. So this one's one that I already had. Um, so I just used a piece of cardboard. This was actually from a package that I got. So. Just use whatever you have. Um, so the way that I created this was, I think first I got a piece of newspaper, a big piece of paper, and I kind of drew out the pattern. And then in order to make it symmetrical from both sides, you would draw out one side. So from here to there, and then to here to this middle part, and then you fold it in half and then trace the other side. That way it's uh, symmetrical. So once you have the paper version of it, you can put it onto the cardboard, trace it out, and cut it out with scissors or a um, X-Acto knife or something like that. So now this is the other side of the pattern and I kind of wrote out um, which colors each section is so it's easier to memorize or like easier to work with. So. I started off with black. I did the tip a little bit longer. I just feel like um, it look good. looks good that way. And the customer requested that I make the stripes, the black stripes thinner than the pink stripes. So that's why it looks like that. But all of them are the same like distance apart or like the same length. So this one's, wait, that's not the right. Okay, there we go. So the black stripes are two inches and the pink stripes are three inches. So I just continued that pattern. So yeah, you can decide to do it however you want. Like maybe you want the stripes to all be even or you want to do them like this. So once that you have your pattern, um, the lines drawn out, then you can start cutting out the pieces with the fur. So the way that that would work is that you would need um, two pieces of each because one is for the front side and one is for the back side. So for this one, you need two pieces, two pieces, two pieces, and so on. So I'm actually recording the intro after I had already created the tail. So this is why it's like a different colored fur. But I just wanted to show you something to keep in mind when you're cutting out the pieces. You want the direction of the fur to be going this way. So you have to keep track that all the pieces that you cut out, they are going in the same direction or else it's going to be weird. Let's say you were to cut out the pink one going in this direction and then you cut out the black one going in that direction. It's going to look a little off. Um, but now I'm going to be showing you kind of how to cut out the pieces because you want to leave a seam allowance for when you sew it. So here you have your piece of fur, um, flip it over just to double check what direction the fur is going. So it's going this way. So you're going to want to place your pattern that way. I think it's actually easier to just keep them all together instead of cutting out the pieces. That's that way, you know, which direction the, like the fur should go. So I'm not actually going to draw on this. I just want to show you what it would be like. So. I guess we can do this peach color, we'll do pink. So we trace around it, trace like this, and I'd like to leave a little line like that just so you know where it ends. And then, yeah, once you have the outline, you would cut around leaving maybe like half an inch of a seam allowance. And then you would keep doing it for each one of that same color. So pink is this one, and then I'd do this one then I do another one. And once you have those, you want to do 
two of each. So you're going to do it twice. And then you go with a different color of fur and you repeat the process but using the other section. So I do black, 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 and you would do it twice. So this is what the patterns would look like once you cut them out. As you can see, they all have seam allowance in all directions. Then you can place them together and they'll be ready to put in the sewing pins. Once the sewing pins are on, you can use the sewing machine to sew it all through. And you can also hand sew. I just prefer to use a sewing machine because it's a lot faster. So when you sew, you have to make sure that you actually um, go over it twice. You'll see what I mean in a second. So you see how it goes forward. Then I'm going to use that little button to go back and then forward again and then I can continue sewing. That way it has a stronger stitch and it won't come apart. So you just want to keep sewing all the way through and you're going to continue this process for each of the sections. You have to make sure that you keep them in the right order so that's going to be a little tricky. And then you're gonna do the same thing at the end. You're gonna go forward once at the very edge and you're gonna go back again and then forward again. That way it's nice and secure from both sides. So that's what it looks like. It's looking pretty good. And then you continue on and put the next piece. And then I like to put little sewing pins to keep it together while I'm sewing it. So now I put all the sewing pins on, so it's going to be ready to put through the sewing machine. And so you're going to repeat what I had mentioned previously of going over the stitch a few times. So you go forward, backwards and then forward again and then once you do that you can sew it all the way through and this is what it will look like with the three pieces all together and that's with all the pieces together and that's for just one side of the tail so you're going to have to repeat the process again and this is what the two pieces look like once they're all sewn now you have to put the two pieces together and the tricky part with this is you want to make sure that the lines line up, I guess, yeah. Or else it's gonna look a little off, so that's all of them lined up with some sewing pins to keep them in place. And so what I wanna do with this one that I didn't do previously is hand sew it, because it's a bigger piece and I feel like it's just gonna slide off if I don't do that beforehand. So I just hand sewed it kind of loosely all the way around that way it's easier for it to go through the sewing machine. And I'm going to do the same thing at the top here, where I go forward, backwards, and then forward again, and then you, you can sew it all the way through. As you can see, now I sewed it all the way around and now it's ready for me to turn it inside out. So I like to start with the tip and make sure that the little point goes all the way out so it's like nice and pointy at the end of the tail. So this tail that I made was a bit thick so it's actually really easy to turn it inside out. So if you created your pattern that was a lot thinner 
this process is going to be a lot harder for you. But as you can see now it's coming out super easy. And that's what it looks like once it's completely turned inside out and it's looking pretty good. So after you turn it inside out, you can put the stuffing in. And because I'm, like I mentioned before, I did make the tail kind of wide, I can actually just fit my entire arm in there and so it makes it really easy to stuff it. So I guess keep that in mind when you're creating your pattern, make sure that the top is like wide enough for you to stick your arm through or maybe a ruler or any kind of long stick. And you can stuff your tail however you like. Um, I think a lot of people prefer it to be lightly stuffed or you can put a lot more stuffing in there. It's just really up to you. So that's what it looks like once you put the stuffing in. And the next step is to add a piece of elastic. And the elastic is used for you to loop your belt through and that's how you would wear it. So the way you can attach the elastic is you just put it in and you hand sew it and that's pretty much it. So this is the final product. I'm really happy with the way it came out. And as you can see in this photo, it has a piece of ribbon loop through the elastic and that is, um, you can use it instead of a belt. So if you don't have a belt, you can put a piece of ribbon through and then you can tie it right around your waist and then it'll stay in place. So I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial and you learned something. If you have any questions, comment below. And in the description, I also linked the website that I used to purchase the fur, which is Big C Fabric. Anyways, thanks for coming by and see you again later. Bye.